Hey guys, today we're gonna to be answering the question, is the Beta Cross Trainer a good hard enduro bike? Now to be able to answer that question, first we need to ask ourselves, what makes a good enduro bike? So when I say, what is a good enduro bike? What am I talking about? Well, we're gonna be talking about specific components that make up a bike that would then classify to be good at enduro. Now when you talk about hard enduro, the first thing that comes to mind when I'm thinking of a bike is something that you really would like to have if you're in the really hard stuff, when you're doing lots of pivot turns and you need good clutch work is a hydraulic clutch. Now this bike does come with a top of the line Brembo hydraulic clutch and these are just top of the class as best as you can get on these bikes. So you don't have to worry about a clutch being an issue. These are tried and true and tested throughout the years and they use them throughout the KTMs and all the Austrian bikes and the Brembo clutches, they're fan freaking tastic. So that it does have, which I'd say, yes, that definitely classifies it in that hard enduro bracket. Now, when you're out on the enduro trails and you are going up some super steep stuff or something where it's super slimy out and you want maximum traction, you want a motor that has the most amount of lugability. So something that you can really bring the RPMs all the way down without wanting the bike to actually stall out. This bike really does check that off. This thing is a freaking lug monster. And uh, they knew that what they were doing specifically with this pipe that it has on the X trainer, this thing will lug for freaking days. So in that regard, I would say yes, it does fit the niche of having great lug ability for a hard enduro machine. Now, speaking of the engine and its power, you want something that's smooth, something that's gonna have linear power so that you're not just lighting up that rear tire and you're actually gonna have some traction to try and climb up that hill climb or that ledge or whatever you're trying to get up. You want smooth linear power and that's what this bike is all about. It's not trying to throw you off the back and it's keeping that rear tire just slipping and keeping that constant traction. So this bike definitely ticks the boxes when we're talking about something it's got smooth, linear, tractable power. Now something that gets overlooked a lot is what transmission you got in the bike. Now for me personally, it needs to have a wide ratio transmission. So all this means is that I want a six speed in it that's got gear ratios that are further apart. So a lot of like the MX bikes, they're gonna come with like a five speed and a close ratio gearbox, meaning each gear is kind of close to each other. But for hard enduro, you specifically want something that's got that six speed with the wide ratio. So you have a giant variety of gears to be able to select throw out the trails and attack it with the best power. Which this bike also comes equipped with the six speed Y ratio gearbox, especially having that first and second gear being reduced so they're a little bit more luggable. You don't have to do as much clutch work, which once again, it's also great having that Brembo clutch up there. Now the next thing is tires. Now standard, this bike comes with these Shinko 216 dot approved street tires and they're pretty Pretty are right when you first get them on the bike, but as soon as you get out into some actual hard trails, you're gonna instantly wanna put on some gummies here. So here's a Dunlop AT81EX gummy tire, and I also run a Kenda Ibex up front that's a gummy, and uh, that's gonna make the absolute world of difference when you're out on the hard enduro trails. So from stock form, the stock tires, not that great. Now, arguably one of the most crucial things about any dirt bike that you're taking out for hard duro is its weight. Now the biggest difference comes when you're talking about two strokes versus the four strokes and just their weight and their mass. Now with four strokes, you're gonna have a lot more weight sitting a lot higher up in the chassis, which is gonna make it feel nowhere near as light or nimble when you're trying to throw it around in the super tight twisties and in the woods. So you definitely want a two stroke when you're going out in the hard enduro stuff. It is just so much easier to lug around one of these bikes, not to mention the fact that the four strokes that are liquid cooled, which is pretty much all good, pretty much any good hard enduro four stroke is gonna be liquid cooled unless you're looking like super old school, like some of the classic XR air cooled bikes. Those are sweet enduro bikes. But when you're talking about those liquid cooled uh, hard enduro bikes, they're just, they're, they're always getting way too hot and you're always having cooling issues with them at them boiling over. But just the way that the weight feels on the two stroke compared to the four stroke is night and day difference. And this bike is so incredibly light and nimble to throw around. And that's where it comes into the size of the Beta Cross Trainer. Having that smaller frame, 15% uh, smaller than the 300 RR makes it just that much more easy when you're in the super hard techie stuff to just toss the bike around and get the bike exactly where you want it. Now, one of the most important things about any motor on your bike is that it needs to be reliable when you're out on the trail. So, so far we put about 100 hours on this engine without a lick of issues. It's been fantastic, starts up every single time. The electric start on this, man, it works every single time. You just press that button, this thing roars right into life right away. So there's no, 
There's no issues with the E-Star on this. I've had no reason to want to try and add weight onto it or spend all the money on getting the Kickstarter kit for the bike. Honestly, just no issues at all. Electric Start is the way to go. So, so far this bike has ticked off pretty much everything that you need to have. It's It's got the Brembo clutch. It's got a great lug ability, super linear, super smooth, reliable power. The engine's fantastic. The power curve with this two-stroke trials type pipe that comes on the bike makes it extremely tractable and in the most gnarly of stuff. And on to top it off, you also have the weather mapping switch. So you can just put it into wet mode, which further reduces that instantaneous snap throttle. So you get good still amount of torque, but it's a very extra smooth amount of torque so that you're not wheel slipping at all when it is wet and slippery out there. So having the power mode is kind of sick and uh, it's come in handy in a couple times when you're in a really slimy scenario and you just you don't want to have to try and use as much clutch work you want the bike to just be really smooth that is really nice to have when you're out in the slippery stuff the tires that's something you can always swap on any bike you know pretty much any stock tire you're going to get on any bikes kind of meh now the last thing we're going to go ahead and talk about is the suspension now this is where it gets a little bit controversial with this bike talking about both the front fork and the rear shock now this bike has olin's front forks and an olin rear shock and uh well this is where people say it's it sucks or it's really good and it depends on what you're doing with it now if you're just in the pure hard enduro stuff where you're not leaving first or second gear and it is all just like pivot turns and super gnarly ledges that you're trying to like jump and pop up then yes the suspension fantastic especially if you're a lighter set rider now if you are a heavier set rider or you're trying to go really fast the suspension's not that great so this is where i feel like someone could say that is this a good hard enduro bike no if you plan on doing any zippy sections in between hard enduro stuff but if you're planning on just doing hard enduro and just hitting the gnarliest and the hardest stuff this bike is fantastic for that it's just the issue of once you get going beyond the hard enduro stuff that it starts to suck so in that regard i would say this is honestly one of the best hard enduro bikes you can get straight out of the factory pretty much everything you could possibly need to go out and conquer the hardest trails other than a set of tires this thing is ready to rock and freaking roll. So to answer the question, is the Beta Cross Trainer good at hard enduro? I would say absolutely yes. Coming from the factory, this thing comes in like a nine out of 10 condition for hard enduro specifics. Now, once you open that up beyond there, well, it's up for debate. But for hard enduro, this bike's an absolute freaking beast at it. Now, if you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure down below, click that like button, click subscribe for more, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.